2022 edition, these look um, very, very similar, right? <clears throat> One of them is clearly uh, rather well more loved. You can't maybe tell that on the camera here, but it's been through, well, it's been to Madagascar and back in other places uh, and through many moves. And this is, this 2022 edition is a brand new, brand new book. Let us walk through how specifically the recommendations for childhood vaccines changed between these two editions. You can show my, uh, my screen here, Zach. I just, I created a document which I went through the two books and compared the recommendations. And I walked through the recommendations last week uh, from the 1992 edition. This is all you know, easily found, page 147. Um, in 1992, there were four vaccines recommended. They've got six here for, for young children. Um, they got DPT, which is diphtheria, whooping cough, and tetanus, polio, uh, BCG for tuberculosis, measles, just the single measles shot. Uh, and then those are those are the early childhood vaccines that the 1992 edition of where there is no doctor recommended. And then they've got tetanus for older children, uh, and which incidentally in 2022 here you see that that's just kind of wrapped up into number one. So they've got nine recommendations, but they've actually cheated by combining one and five from before because the T in the DPT shot is a tetanus shot. Uh, so you know consistently. Uh, where there is no doctor says, you know, tetanus is the thing that you really have to worry about and you really want to be protected from um, polio, tuberculosis, measles, um, and uh, smallpox being the others. Smallpox, they said, and I didn't actually catch this when I was talking about it last week, um, they mentioned in the 1992 edition, but they said the disease has been eradicated, so you don't need this anymore. So they actually had five recommended vaccines in... Um, in in 1992 for young children and in 2022 they still have dpt and polio and bcg for tuberculosis and measles although now they say maybe it should also be maybe instead of measles it should be the mmr shot um, which is the triple measles mumps and rubella and then they add a whole bunch more so in 2022 we've got hep b uh, which and i'm just i've got in quotes here what the uh, what the 2022 edition says about either the disease or the pathogen that is identified as being dealt with by the vaccine is what it does. So Hep B is described in the 2022 edition of where there is no doctor as a serious liver disease, and they say three or four shots simultaneous with DBT. Hib, which is Haemophilus influenza type B. Um, which, quote, causes meningitis and pneumonia, three to four shots, again, simultaneous with DPT plus a booster. You've got number seven here, pneumococcal conjugate against pneumonia, three shots, again, simultaneous with DPT. You've got rotavirus, uh, which is apparently, quote, against a diarrhea disease that can kill young children. That's an oral vaccine like the polio vaccine. And then HPV, which they don't specify, but I believe they're not giving that to young children anywhere. So I gave them the benefit of the doubt here and did not put that into the young children uh, recommendations. This is human papillomavirus, which, quote, causes cervical cancer and some other cancers. Uh, and I counted up the shots, too. And uh, in 1992, where there was no doctor recommended for young children, five shots plus oral polio vaccine and three additional shots for older children in the form of the tetanus shot. And in the 2022 edition, they're recommending 15 to 17 shots, depending, plus oral polio and oral rotavirus, and for older children, an additional five to six shots. That's a big change. And when I go looking just a little bit at what, how effective these new vaccines are, whether or not they are actually doing what they're claiming to do, whether or not they are definitely necessary, all the places that they are being advocated for, whether or not having all of these at once, which is probably more about compliance than about health, right? Now, if you're a rural uh, healthcare worker and you've got someone with a baby and you are convinced that they absolutely need for the health of their baby to get them this full retinue of vaccinations, it is going to be much harder to get that mother with her young baby and she may have other babies at home, other children at home, and she's got a lot of things going on. It's going to be harder to get her to come in 15 to 17 times than it is to get her to come in three, four, five times, right? So if you have everything on the same schedule as the original DPT vaccine, the diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus vaccine, and you're taking the hep B shot at the same time, and the hib shot, and the pneumococcal conjugate shot, and the rotavirus oral vaccine all at the same time, well, most of these vaccines have adjuvants in them, don't they? 
And so you're just ramping up that immune system of that young child, in some cases so young that they are, if you've taken the other advice in this otherwise excellent book um, completely, that child is still only and exclusively breastfed. That child is still being protected uh, largely by the breast milk of their mother and receiving immune information from their mother. There is a lot to wonder about what has changed in these recommendations. And this is not a match for the childhood vaccination schedule in the U.S. Indeed, the childhood vaccination schedule in the U.S. is, is more than this. Um, but I don't, I have not yet heard or read or thought of an explanation for an increase in the childhood vaccination schedule this extreme that makes evolutionary or medical sense. Yes, and the mechanism for knowing is available to us and um, does not appear to be deployed as a rationale, right? Mm -hmm. An all-cause mortality benefit of both the individual vaccines and, more importantly, the schedule as a whole, yeah. right? If you adhere to this schedule, are you better off in terms of how long you're going to live than if you didn't? right? That's an important question because as you point out, let's say you have a shot and let's say that it was tested in isolation because of course it would be, and it has the correct amount of adjuvant if there is such a thing for inducing the correct amount of response in the immune system to produce the correct uh, uh, reactivity. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you give somebody multiple shots at once. Okay, well, probably if the correct amount of adjuvant was some quantity that was activating enough of the immune system, then really you only need the adjuvant from one shot because the activated immune system from that one shot is sufficient to activate the immune system for the antigens in the other shots. So the idea- unless, I mean, unless the argument is, oh, actually you need, you need that uh, because you need the immune system responding to you know, Hib and to DPT and to all of these things, in which case that's an argument against taking the shots at the same time. Yeah, right, right, exactly. And so I, I guess let's put it this way. You and I, like so many others, bought the story surrounding vaccines. And, you know, mm -hmm. I believe that the story, the Jenner story about smallpox and cowpox is a very powerful story that mm -hmm. talks about a very potent mechanism for actually reducing infectious disease. We are believers in the idea of vaccination, but the radical program in which we take many diseases <laughs> and vaccinate a young person from them, effectively sending that person's immune system the message that they are in this environment full of these pathogens, just attacking them you know, at an incredible rate, yeah. right? Is that safe? Nobody knows. Yeah. Could we find out? We sure could, but there's a question. Is the explosion in the vaccine schedule driven by our having developed vaccines that are in isolation worthwhile? Are they still worthwhile in conjunction? Or is this motivated by shareholder value mm -hmm. and the fact that standards of care can be used to get doses of things administered to people and what happens to those people is actually quite secondary. 